Captain. Now we're very happy to be joined on the phone by former UK football player and current UK Hall of Famer, Derek Abney. Derek, since we talked to you last, you've been inducted into the UK Hall of Fame, so I guess we have to ask, does life uh, does it seem a little different through the eyes of a Hall of Famer? <laughs> no, no. I mean, uh, uh, as always, just, you know, disappointed whenever we lose. Um, but uh, no, not, not different uh, being a Hall of Famer. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the football. You know, a big loss again, 38-0 uh, to zero on Saturday to Florida, coming fo after the Western Kentucky loss. What, what do you make of uh, the football situation as a whole right now? Uh, you know, I got kind of frustrated. Um, I felt like... Uh, you know, at times I felt at the beginning of the game we, we could put some runs together and the defense was doing pretty well. Um, you know, but I, I just found myself getting pretty frustrated. I, you know, I had to step back a little bit. Although, you know, the score wasn't it was a pretty big difference. I felt the defense did a little better tackling. I know that was one issue we had. Um, obviously, I think the running offense was a little bit better. Uh, a pretty poor performance at quarterback. That's going to have to be fixed. But, um you know, at first I was pretty disheartened, but I tried to put it into perspective a little bit. Is it to me? It's frustrating because for the first two games of the season, it was the offense. We say, "Wow, the offense looks so good. We're finally putting points up." Then the defense finally yeah. comes around the swamp. And granted, the starting quarterback didn't play, but just look at from a from a team perspective. How hard is that? Uh, for offense and defense, when when they're not in sync together, does that take a toll on the players? Uh, it can be very frustrating, and you know, th uh, this isn't the first game in, in, you know, in football. Not necessarily even the, the Wildcats, where you, you have one game where you really have the defense coming along, and then another game is the offense. And, and those teams that can really get all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams going together, those are you know the, the great teams. And so it was, it was, it was disappointing. I mean, but maybe like like we said, TJ, you look at it in the bright side. Um, you know, if the defense was coming on along a little bit, uh, if we can get all three of them rolling, uh, we're going to be a pretty good team. Like you said, we're missing our uh, our our quarterback. Hopefully, he's uh, back to uh, not 100% because you ever, never are. But hopefully, he's out there next weekend, this weekend, and hopefully, we can get all three going together. You know, the optimist in me wants to say. The defense is playing better. When Max Smith comes in, maybe Kentucky's going to be in a better position to compete in the SEC games than maybe they were a couple of weeks ago, despite losing 38 to nothing. Do you see optimism in the, in the remainder of the season? Because for a lot of fans, it's tough to see that coming out of these back-to-back these -back losses. Do you see optimism down the line in, in things that, that you're looking forward to seeing from, from either side of the ball? Well, you know, one like you said, we we already touched on optimism that we have seen flashes of of uh, good plays on on offense and on on defense, but it's, it doesn't get any easier. You know, this is the SEC East, and we've got um, some fantastic opponents, and so it just it's it's a difficult road. Um, it's it's a little bit up in the air. I will say I was I was pretty frustrated after this last game, but uh, I'm the eternal optimist. And if we can bring all three together, uh, we do have a, a shot to be competitive. When we talked before the season, uh, you talked very very much about how you supported Joker Phillips, and he's a lifer. He's a Kentucky guy, and to be patient. Mm -hmm. Watching these four games are one and three now with a couple of bad losses. Has anything changed in your eyes, or do you, you still feel the same way as, as you did before the season? Well, I, you know, I was a little, like I said, disappointed when I think I guess it's um, two weekends ago at Western Kentucky when we had we had to call some timeouts at very inopportune moments when there was plenty of, of opportunity um, after some breaks. I, I felt some. Um, you know, that there's just been a, a couple calls that I think would have maybe gone differently. Uh, but, uh, but uh, you know, like you said, the, the one advantage with uh, Coach Phillips is if, if we do start get, turning this around, the, the young guys that he keeps talking about do come along, um, he's the guy that will stay. You know, if we have another coach that does well, um, who knows if they move on. So you, you really got to be careful what we ask for in a new coach that does very well um, with no allegiance to Kentucky that uh, Coach Phillips has. Now, there were some rumors yesterday. Uh, Patrick Tolles, his dad came out and did an interview, said that, that he's frustrated, wants to play a little bit. They will reevaluate their situation at the end of the year. When these losses start piling up 
And, and you talk about the young talent. That's the, the selling point for, for people that are pro Joker and want to be patient with the program. How hard is it for a coaching staff to keep young guys who've had a lot of success in high school to keep them patient and saying, trust us, we're building this together, we're all together as one, be patient? Well, you know, uh, there's no incentive for Coach Phillips to hold back Patrick, really. I mean, if he's really on the high seat like we say he is, then uh, he would want to play him. But uh, he's, he's thinking long term. And, and it is, it's got to be very difficult in this day and age to have, have a, um, a player that, I, you know, however many state championships they won at Highlands and, and a winner having to sit on the sideline, you know, when we're going 38 to nothing. So, and that's a good thing as a quarterback. And now uh, maybe he needs, I mean, it's his dad and, and maybe, you know, as a family, but maybe he needs to keep that internal. But, I, you know, I want that drive. I want that competitiveness. And, uh, you know, this, if this is the worst coach has to, to deal with as far as publicity, then I, I think he'll be okay. Do you think, you know, the, the curious thing about Max Smith's shoulder to me is that, you know, Joker was very quiet about it and it seemed kind of sudden that he wasn't able to play, but now they're saying today he should be good to go. It was something that was just, you know, temporary. He's healing. Do you have any concerns long term, whether this season, next season, about that shoulder injury that Max Smith has been nursing? <laughs> well, um, I don't know uh, the, the, the real word about it, but it's really an AC joint issue. And that's exactly what happened to me um, and with the Ravens on the first play of my NFL career. And, um, Unfortunately for me, it was a very difficult uh, uh, injury to come back from, and I don't know how this, you know, gets how this works even with a, a quarterback in his shoulder. But uh, for me and my AC joints, and there's, you know, different grades. I had a little bit more severe, and I don't know what what Max is is, um, but uh, it, it can be it can be difficult.